A visit to Dundrod in Northern Ireland is truly an unforgettable motorcycling experience. It's one of the world's oldest and fastest bike tracks. They've been racing on the closed public roads for almost a century. And many of the biggest names in the sport have competed here. Situated just a few miles outside Belfast, this unique circuit plays host to one of Northern Ireland's most famous sporting events every summer, the Ulster Grand Prix. The lights go out and away we go. And Lee Johnston in pursuit of David Johnson, as all, and a front wheel wiggle there from Lee Johnston. Here comes Peter Hickman. Peter Hickman past Dean Harrison. Peter Hickman takes the lead. This truly is a very special race meeting, an unmissable date in the motorcycling calendar. Welcome to highlights of this year's Fona Cab Ulster Grand Prix, an event which always produces some of the most fabulous two-wheel racing you'll find anywhere in the world. And the best in the business are all here. Here are some of the road racing contenders to look out for. British superbike star Peter Hickman is the fastest road racer in the world. Fellow Englishman Dean Harrison is the Ulster Grand Prix lap record holder. Leading the local challenge is Lee Johnston, a winner already this season at the Northwest 200 and Isle of Man TT. Maxman Connor Cummins was a winner at the Ulster last year. Davy Todd is one of the hottest young properties in road racing. And Michael Dunlop from Northern Ireland is one of the biggest draws in the sport. Dunlop has passed a medical to race this week and is still recovering from injuries sustained as a result of this crash at the Southern 100 race meeting in July. He suffered a broken pelvis and damaged his wrist amongst other injuries, but amazingly returned 16 days later to win both superbike races at the Armoy Road Race of Legends. He aggravated those injuries again and had his arm in plaster just a few days ago. Michael Dunlop has just announced he will sit out today's racing because he doesn't feel fully fit and will try and race on Saturday. The superbike race is first. Peter Hickman is in pole position. He's been setting new benchmarks in the sport and unofficially broke the lap record for this track in practice. He has five wins in the past two years and has been man of the meeting two years in a row. Many people think this will be a superbike showdown between Hickman and Harrison. We trust each other a lot, you know. I, I know how he rides, he knows how I ride. We both know how fast we each are. I've never had a crossword with him about anything. Um, he's always been spot on with me whenever he's passed me and, and vice versa, you know, I'm sure he would say the same about myself. Peter's brilliant, don't get me wrong, there's only one of many other people who are, are, are going real fast. And Lee's riding really well, Dave or Johnson's riding well on the Honda because he got poured into the TT. So there's, there's a lot of people out there. Connor rides really well around here, so it's, uh, I think it's not just going to be a two-horse race. I think there's going to be a bit of a train going on. There's a massive bunch of riders, you know, there's never just down to just me and Dean. Um, you know, there is a, you know, the top ten, any of the top ten can win. Hickman and Harrison certainly know their way around Dundrod, which is a road racer's dream circuit. Just under seven and a half miles long, it's a mix of very quick straights where speeds can reach over 200 miles an hour, fast flowing bends between the curbs and through the trees, 25 turns in all, including a famous hairpin where races can be won or lost. The weather conditions are absolutely perfect at Dundrod. The sun is shining with a light breeze, this should be a cracker. 
fingers crossed that this is as good a race as it promises to be. Yes, they tend to be, Richard, at the Ulster Grand Prix. What a cracking track and what a cracking lineup for riders yet again here at Dundrod. Picky may be on pole, but anyone on the first three rows could beat him, and any one of these riders you're looking at now could take it to him all the way through this race. Yes, I think it's crucial, really, that whoever is away in the first group of riders onto the track or any of them are in with a chance of winning this race this is the moment clear the grid look to the lights and get ready for the start oh harrison and hickman and cummins everyone away quite well davy todd looking good from row four and already coming up on the back of lee johnston todd on row four lee johnston on row one at the start my goodness it's harrison who leads from hickman the Flying Kilo is the first place you get a little bit of a toe here at the Ulster Grand Prix and it could all be different by the time they get to that right turn at Leathamstown. Yeah, three rock bends they go as they sort themselves out on this opening lap. Five laps is the distance. We're looking back from Derek Shields at Lee Johnston. David Johnston just behind Lee Johnston. Second wave gets away. Davey Morgan, Mark Parrott, Chris Duncan, Lauren Hoffman. You could see a winner from that group, but it's unlikely. There's the slipstream working up the hill. Yeah, this is coming up to the top of uh, Deer's Leap for the very first time. Conditions look fantastic. With Derek Shields, he's having a great year. Dean Harrison's having a great opening lap at the moment. Hickman doesn't want him to get away, does he? Connor Cummins is right behind them, though. Yes, but crucially, there's a gap from Cummins back to Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson has got to plug that gap sooner rather than later. This is on board with David Johnson as we look at the start again. Hickman and Harrison are the two to watch. And look out for Davey Todd because he's making up ground as well. Yeah, he just comes up into about sixth place. So a cracking start for Davey Todd, just out of shot. And there is Lee Johnston. Oof, that was decidedly firm, wasn't it? It was. Here we go again then. Harrison's start was good, wasn't it? They both, they all were. Out of everyone's starts, were there was no real bad starts in there. Back into the race, we're riding with Connor Cummins. Yeah, he's had some great results. He had a great Ulster Grand Prix last year. He's tucked in behind Peter Hickman. Dean Harrison leads on this opening lap. But as we know, Richard, Peter Hickman will not want to sit on Dean Harrison for too long, will he? He's, Peter Hickman actually said this morning before the race that following someone's not a good plan when there's a possibility that a red flag could throw the result back a lap. Because yeah, that has happened to him, hasn't it? Yeah. So. so <laughs> He's watching. Yeah. Is he waiting or is he going to go? Maybe. I mean, generally you then see, hear them say, well, they look to see. Peter will say, I'm look to see where Dean's strong. Oh, and, Connor. Uh, <laughs> this is where Connor comes is strong through Joey's windmill. But uh, Peter Hickman will be looking perhaps to see where Dean Harrison is strong and where he will look to make his move. We're on board with Davy Todd. Great start from him from row four. And he's making up more ground, or is he, is he going to get through here? I think he's done that. It's so bumpy at Jordan's cross. Elbow to elbow, but he's done that nice and tidy. Yeah, he's past David Johnson, who started on row two. David Johnson's not had a lot of track time, really, on the Honda. Looking back at Davy Todd from Derek Shields. Glorious afternoon. This is perfect racing weather. The track is dry. I mean, we're having perfect racing so far. Overtakes are plenty on this opening lap, certainly in this little scrap. Further on, my goodness me, taking out to the white line. But here we are, Lindsay Hairpin, first time. It's still Harrison from Hickman. Cummins, Johnson has plugged that gap I was concerned about, but now he's creating a gap back to fifth place. Uh, which is Davy Todd, which is incredible. I'm sorry to keep going on about it, but from row four, he's up to fifth on the opening lap. He's done really well, hasn't he? But this is uh, going a bit like a 600 race up front. They are still close together. There's gaps on the circuit, you can see them, but they're fractions of a second rather yeah. than seconds. Yes, you're right, Richard, they are. It, they look bigger than they actually are, and I'm sure we'll get an indication of that when they cross the finish line for the very first time to complete the opening lap of this superbike race here at Dundrod. Here they come, Harrison trying to break Peter Hickman early on if he can. It is a four, a gang of four that is going to cross this line. Here they come. Dean Harrison, Hickman, Cummins, Lee Johnston. That gap back to Davy Todd. And my goodness, less than a second covering the top four over the line. Said it was a 600 race, but we'll see now because this is where they'll go for slipstream passes as they run along the flying kilo. I think Peter Hickman's starting to look a little bit racy. Uh, oh, and that's a that's shame. Paul isn't Jordan. It? Yeah, Paul Jordan is out. He's a retirement after just one lap. So back at the front, Peter Hickman, 
into Leathamstown, just behind Dean Harrison, and I think the racing really will begin now, won't it? He's going to get a toe going up the hill. This is a uh, good place to pass if you've got the speed, but he's not got the distance, has he? No, the uh, silicon engineer in Kawasaki, you can see just a little bit of grunt coming out of the turn. He won't. He's not close enough as they come into here to make a move. But he can, if he can keep the speed up over the top here, down into this swooping right. It's one of the greatest parts of any racetrack in the world. And I'm putting it up there with the likes of Bray Hill and the course group Laguna Seca. Tearsley, fantastic. There are plenty of other corners on this racetrack that uh, make the hairs on the uh, back of your neck stand up when you look at them from trackside as well. Uh, but this is Hegman. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that is the one thing you hear a lot about lots of tracks where, well, there's not that many overtaken opportunities. Here at Dundrod, they're everywhere. They keep making new ones as well, don't they? And yet it's a layout which has been, hasn't been changed in decades. You know, you see other road race circuits around the world, there's chicanes, etc. put in. This is has, it has been since the days of Agostini and Hellwood. If you could design courses like this, you'd be a millionaire in no time at all because this is perfect perfect racetrack and yet it is just a public highway speed flows and also as well you're looking at thousand cc superbikes which is what these guys are on and they are being ridden how they're supposed to be ridden whereas on a modern day uh, man-made circuit a two mile long circuit they're stop start stop stop no get yeah, that throttle yeah. and go yes they're going to be up to 180 185 miles an hour through this part of the course they'll be topping almost 200 miles an hour through the speed trap yeah. so they're not holding back they're not they're certainly not holding back it is still for lee johnson just trying to stay on with these top three and it is the top three that uh, i must uh, did predict at the start of this uh, not hard to but I thought Hickman would be ahead of Harrison, so Dean Harrison dictating the pace. Connor Cummins in third place, just as he was a year ago as well. I'll tell you what, once this race ooh, ooh, yeah, ooh. once this race goes past the point where it would need a restart if there was a red flag, Hickman yeah. won't wait. Exactly, yeah, absolutely. However, at the moment, he can't do too much about Dean Harrison by the looks of things. It's Harrison from Hickman, Cummins perhaps, a little gap just appearing between second and third. Harrison's having to work harder than Hickman, he's setting the pace, he's conscious of what's happening behind him, he's having to try and outride Peter Hickman, and watch. Peter Hickman's just going to follow him. Well, watch Hickman now, because he's just a tenth of a second behind Harrison, he's perfect, and we've seen this many times before, to do the slipstream along the flying kilo, and it's all about that exit out of the last turn, to make sure you're in the slipstream across the line, and he has executed that perfectly. Peter Hickman now leads from Dean Harrison Come and he's pulling away he's probably got a bigger gap over Dean Harrison than Harrison's ever had in the previous two laps possibly this is on board with Dean Harrison into Leathamstown so he's now got a little bit of work to do he's got to try and come up with a plan somewhere that he can find on this circuit to make his way past Peter Hickman well we said there'd be plenty of depth in this field and plenty of racing for the spectators Josh Daly and Tom Whedon there, but of course what they've come to see is the battle up front between the, uh, Peter Hickman and Dean Harrison. It is, it's been going on for quite some time and I tell you what, that gap looks to be getting a little bit bigger as they come down mm. Deer's Leap. Dean Harrison will not want to see Peter Hickman disappear off into the distance. As he goes right, he's starting to pull even further away as they dive underneath the trees. This is a really nice part of the circuit as well, it's you know. It's all a nice part of the circuit, Richard. <laughs> I know what you're saying, but it is an incredible part of the circuit. Dean Harrison, of course, the lap record holder, 134.6. He did that a couple of years ago. The, uh, Peter Hickman, 133.5 uh, on that last lap. But unofficially broke that lap record in practice this morning, so Hickman has got the speed to break the lap record again. Oh, Hickman, he's on it. He's gone, he he? is on it. My goodness, he came out of the turn there, absolutely flying through Joe as they go. A little bit bigger gaps this time between the top four, but that's not to say it's done and dusted, this one. He's bang on for Mr. Peter Hickman, short circuits, road races, doesn't matter where you take him, he just steps up to the mark and rides out of his skin without seeming to put that much effort into it but it must take an awful lot of effort we're with jamie coward he's in ninth we just saw Derek shields he was in sixth place just ahead of david johnson 
Howard makes half a place then. Um, Peter Hickman is making the break. And I'll tell you what as well, Richard, his sector times are very fast. We have to keep an eye on this one with Peter Hickman. He's opening two sector times. They're in the purples. Oh, we're about to see magic happen yet again. Oh, Peter Hickman is capable of extraordinary lap speeds and times. He'll tell you, though, it's not lap records. He's after its race wins, and that's what any racer will tell you. But, but Peter Hickman... you've won the race, a lap record would be nice. Exactly, exactly. So then, Dean Harrison with Peter Hickman disappearing off into the distance. So we're at the, right, just into the second half of this race now. Just coming up to complete lap three. Fantastic to see the way that uh, the bike... He's not actually taking any prisoners at all, is he? Oh, my goodness me, Richard, this is fast. This is going to be very, very fast indeed. Here he comes, Peter Hickman, across the line. Oh, and there it is. It's a new lap record, and he smashed it. He smashed it by two seconds. Absolutely Peter incredible. He's on fire. 136.4. That is two miles an hour faster than Dean Harrison two years ago and it's the fastest one if the, the Ulster Grand Prix has got its title back yep the fastest road race in the world is right here and you're looking at it right now absolutely incredible and he's three miles an hour faster than the previous lap and he was four seconds faster than the previous lap lap two of this race to go four seconds faster my goodness me what's he going to do on this one <laughs> oh, I think he's going to have a little rest I would if I was him but uh, let's not forget, there's lots going on uh, behind him. Yeah, David Johnson, he's just in this battle with Derek Shields and Davy Todd, Jamie Coward just behind. So here he comes, the man, and he is the man. Tell you what, sector one of this race, he's just finished it. He's added another second to his lead over Dean Harrison in that sector. Incredible from Peter Hickman. He is just rewriting everything. So then, looking back, what's it like racing behind Peter Hickman oh. when you just can't catch the bloke? No one can catch him when he's like this, can they? Incredible, absolutely incredible. And he's still not playing it's, around, is he? You can see the movement in the front wheel there as he went through the turn. So through Ireland's he goes, on his way up towards through Joey's Windmill and Jordan's Cross. And it would be a very frustrated Dean Harrison, I would imagine, in second place behind him. When you're riding the wheels off your motorcycle and the, the bloke in front of you is pulling away, you've got to think, what do we need to do now to this machine to catch up? This BMW has been getting better and better, hasn't it, through the season? Yeah. And it is now better than it ever was. Better, Peter Hickman said, and than it was at the TT. And I tell you what, Richard, I bet you he say, he'll tell you there's still more to come. It's got to be, isn't it? It's only a few months old as a, a race bike. Uh, so... BMW have got the package again that everybody needs to beat. That's one thing. Uh, and part of their package, of course, is the extraordinary talent of Peter Hickman. David Johnson following Davy Todd. But here is Peter Hickman. Is he on lap record pace again? Maybe not. It's there or thereabouts. But uh, we may not see history is. And that's a D Dean Harrison who he's trying. He is trying. And he still can't catch. People around the circuit, you can see them sat there in the sunshine. Won't be just the weather they remember wow. from this, will it? You're watching a masterclass here. Wow. This is an absolute display from Peter Hickman. Great ride again from Connor Cummins, though, on the Honda. In third place, just keeping Dean Harrison in vision. A quick look around, see where Lee Johnson is. We're back with Derek Shields. Uh, Lee Johnson's there, just ahead of uh, Davy Todd. Uh, and he's about three seconds down on Connor Cummins, so off the podium. I don't think he's going to see the podium, the third step of the podium in this race, unless something unfortunate happens to a motorcycle. Chains do break, don't they? They do. Dean so Harris is not holding back either, is he? Look, yeah, and Connor Cummins is a little bit uh, better behaved as they get the flag for the last lap. Yeah, one second slower this time for Peter Hickman outside his lap record. So still a blindingly fast lap. Five and a half seconds the gap between Hickman and Dean Harrison. Three seconds back to Connor Cummins, uh, and then three seconds back to uh, Lee Johnson going over the line there. That's right. It's around about ten seconds back to David Todd in fourth, uh, fifth. Sorry, David Johnson still following him. And this little battle still raging on just off the leaders. And uh, Brian McCormack has dropped a little bit of space to Michael Sweeney. Sweeney was ahead of McCormack, but they have swapped positions. I don't know what has happened to McCormack.
Well, what a race this has turned out. We had high hopes of this, but for Peter Hickman especially, it's a great well, race. Uh, but as we know, it's not over until they get to that checkered flag. Anything can happen. Peter Hickman has had blow-ups here in the past. Yeah. He certainly looks as setting the standard. Yeah. He looks just untouchable at the moment, isn't absolutely he? Absolutely incredible. Dean Harrison, who's already signed up with Silicon Engineering Kawasaki oh, for no. next year, and that is a red flag. It's not what you want to see. Uh, and that's what Peter Hickman was talking about. You have a red flag. Whatever happens now, that goes back at least one lap because they will call this a race. Won't will they that? Now? Yes, I think that should mean that the lap record is safe um, because if that is a race result declared, I think it will go back to the end of lap three, perhaps because quite a few of the riders haven't completed lap four. But my goodness, plenty for everyone to talk about at the end of that race. Well, they have called the result after four laps. So the lap record in his pocket, Peter Hickman wins it by five seconds. Seconds from Dean Harrison, Connor Cummins third, Lee Johnston just out of reach the podium, Davy Todd an excellent fifth. It went really smoothly, Dean got a really good start and I uh, sat behind Dean nice and comfortable for the first um, first couple of laps. I was trying to work out where I could pass him clean, you know, it's difficult to pass clean, you know, he's riding so good, so um, managed to get a really good run onto the onto the start and finish, onto the flying kilo and that gives you that extra few miles an hour, you know, we're not, um, we're not the fastest in a straight line but the bike goes around the corners really well, so once I actually got through before turn one, I just did my own thing, did, did my lines and did my braking points as I did this morning. And um, yeah, we managed to carry that speed and uh, yeah, break the lap record again. So um, great to get it back for the Ulster Grand Prix and fastest road race in the world again. Bike's working reasonably well. We've got a few little issues uh, out there then. Uh, maybe a couple of stakes from my behalf, but no, faultless race to be honest. It's a shame we didn't get to see the checker flag to be honest. Uh, it's always nice just to finish the race and where we are, but no, it's good, working well. It's the inaugural year of the Metzler King of the Roads title for Superbike competitors. And Derek Shields leads the way. One race completed with a very familiar Superbike podium lineup. Coming up next, it's action from the lightweight and ultra lightweight classes. most successful rider in the history of this event is the late Joey Dunlop. 24 times he won at the Ulster Grand Prix with a total of 48 victories around the Dundrod circuit and his last win was probably his best when he beat David Jeffries in a thrilling superbike duel in 1999. Jeffries then rates himself as a favourite for the final race of the day but Joey is an old stager and they come under starters orders now. Jason Griffiths is there on final one, three and Joey all there was a bit of tension that day and it sort of built out as the the day went on and then it came to a climax in that second superbike race. Oh, we look up from the start finish line, the two B&M Yamaha side by side and Joey Dunlop is looking to split them. Joey split them, Joey's in two, second place. What a ride from Joey Dunlop, really this is commitment now. The biggest race of the day, can Joey Dunlop make it his 24th Dundrod win? is probably one of my favourite races, uh, one of my favourite colour schemes, so on the 20th anniversary we thought we'd just do something a little different and that was the first thing that popped into our head, so and it's nice for the fans as much as anything, I think everybody, everybody loves the sound of the RC45 and it brings a lot of special memories back for anybody that was here that day as well. So. They are absolutely giving him everything as is David Jeffries, Jeffries is not going to let him out though, we're at Cochrane Town now and Joey Dunlop is in a real race and David Jeffries is putting all the pressure on him, Joey Dunlop, what a ride this is from him. And he's got a man who has broken the outright circuit record behind him. And look at the ecstasy from the crowd. Joey Dunlop is coming into view behind Dave Willem. Dunlop wins. And he was under the existing lap record too. Joey Dunlop never ceases to amaze me. So a memorable moment as Gary Dunlop rides his dad's Honda Superbike for a tribute lap with Connor Cummins aboard David Jeffrey's Yamaha 20 years since their famous Dundrod duel. Let's see how Gary gets on in the ultra lightweight race. His girlfriend Melissa Kennedy is also competing in this one, but first away will be the lightweight machines. 
So it's a mixture of 250s, 400s in the first wave, then the Moto3 bikes on the second wave. It's watch the lights, get ready to go. Neil Kernahan in pole position, Davey Morgan alongside him. Chris Duncan also on the front row. Looks like a good start from Duncan, is it? Oh, it's oh. very tight. <laughs> Davy Morgan and Neil Kernan, shoulder to shoulder, just in front of us now as we ride with Paul Williams. There's Davy Morgan in the middle of the road with uh, Kernan on the other side of the white line, just crowding him a little bit as they head towards the kilo. Davy Morgan might have just edged it. No, it's Kernan. It's going to be one of those races. <laughs> Isn't it? Just second wave gets away. You see Gary Dunlop in the middle there on the bike. He's borrowed, but it's um, Michael Duckerville uh, who won a race here last year for the first time. He was pole position, but uh, Gary Dunlop's had a lot of problems, almost didn't make it to the grid. So that bike not done up in his usual colours, but at least that number three plate is out there. Christian Elkin is there as well. So too Nigel Moore, Melissa Kennedy, Wayne Kennedy as well. Well, look at that. There's a bit of space appearing already, isn't there? Yeah, Kernahan won this race on the Thursday of Ulster Grand Prix race week last year. He's leading Davy Morgan. That seems to have spread out just a little bit. Davy Morgan is not as far away as he looked, but he is further back than he was. These uh, two straight races can do that sometimes. And also, as well, opening laps, people just taking it easy, bedding them in and not pushing them too hard too soon. Well, the, don't say that because they are pushing them too hard too soon right now. <laughs> oh, it's very true. <laughs> but we're on board with Melissa Kennedy, the Moto3. As they come up into Ireland for the first time, it's Kernahan trying to break Davy Morgan if he can, but Davy Morgan just about hanging in there. There's a little bit of a gap oh! behind. I missed that. It was out to the line. My goodness me. Gareth Keyes. He didn't want to take it any further, otherwise he would have been in the field. Well, this is lap one, remember. He just doesn't want to lose touch with him, does he? Because he, and I think he already has, hasn't he? Now, very true. Especially after that. Yes, so very he, true. Now it's these two, and he'll just have to watch them, won't he? Because he'll never catch them up now. He's lost the toe, but these two are right in it. Someone just coming straight past Paul Williams. Oh, it was, could have been Sean Anderson. Well, a huge battle up the front, as you can see. Dave Walsh, number seven there, leading this pair through the left-hander. Yes, yeah, McKeown and McGore, I think that was as well. So number 14 interview up into Joey's windmill. That is Peter Fletcher. And now, Kernahan is just in front of Davy Morgan at the top of the circuit, so he didn't get past him on that long run up the hill. The Honda did have speed, and he got a bit of a toe, and it closes up again. Yeah, this is a repeat of what we saw in the opening lap from these two as they come down into the hairpin, but there is still some distance to go in this race. It's nip and tuck all the way. Heading towards the end of lap two, so we're not even half distance yet, and they are separated by bike's length coming out of the Lindsay hairpin. The exit, as you've mentioned, Richard, is so important out of there as well. Gareth Again, Keyes is together, yeah, but this could all change in the next 100 yards, couldn't it? They could all be fourth becomes first and first becomes fourth. One good scrabble into the hairpin could change this all around just as easily as the slip dream does. Oh, puff of smoke there from, uh, from Paul Williams on the 400. So that's the battle for third place in the lightweight class. Second place for Williams, and is Gareth Keyes just beginning to pull away from him? I don't know, I don't know, but anyway, it's the fastest lap, and here we go again. Last lap of the race, Kernahan goes over the line just ahead of Davy Morgan. He's now just tucking in along the flying kilo, or tries to tuck in. He should have stuck behind him, but it's easy to say that sitting here, isn't it? It is. But he thinks he could get past those, they're so evenly matched, these two machines. The riders know each other well enough that they can, uh, and they're getting the last lap signal for the uh, battle behind as well. Yep, this is for third place still, four into one position. They're all battling for that bottom step of the podium. Gareth Keyes, as uh, Williams, Williams, Williams goes, goes through, yep. Anderson's still very close. It's one bike noise going past the uh, curbside camera, isn't it? Whoosh, it's not three engines. In. Chris yes. Duncan is the rider that's just trying to stay with them. So then, here he is, Michael de Koupel. Oh, that's a good that's advantage. A, that is, isn't it? That's a nice big gap. That's never been that big. Yeah. So that's still Christian Elkin in second place in the ultra lightweight class. So here comes mm -hmm. Kernahan and Morgan. It's the last chance saloon. 
David Morgan has not settled for second place, has he? Not by a long shot. Not by a long, long shot. A veteran, of course, of Dundrod. What can he do in the draft up the hill? He made up to, he's never got the drop on Kernahan going up that hill. He's always done it at the other side of the circuit. He's down and Gary Dunlop going strongly. But this is the battle. All eyes are on, and I think it's over. I don't. Lindsay Hairpin. Anything can happen <laughs> to Lindsay Hairpin, can't it? It's, that's, the, that's the crucial part of this track. So we drop back to the battle of third. But if Kernahan can get away from. Oh, this is it's still, still going a battle, on. isn't it? Yeah. But as I say, oh, Davy Morgan is close enough. I was going to say Kernahan would need to pull away. But it's all about now, has Davy Morgan got that little bit of grunt? Can he find a little bit of slipstream Ooh, that, he he can, that he can find a way past Neil Kernahan? Here is Gareth Keyes. He wants third place. So too does Sean Anderson. So too does Paul Williams. Lindsay Hairpin for the... Oh! oh! Gareth Keyes clipped the bales. Go oh, Alan Williams missing. He's done very well too. Here's the look. Here's the view. For, oh, he just did clip the bale, didn't he? He went too far over. He went too far over. He looks to be okay, thankfully. Yeah, so he's going to have a sit there and uh, give himself a talking to before he walks back to the pits, I dare say, but he does look yeah. unharmed, doesn't he? I know. Red flag as well has come out because of that accident. But a result has been declared, and it's Neil Kernahan from Davey Morgan. Look with at the gap. Paul Williams back in third place. My goodness me, what a race that was. Ah, that was a real good race. Sort of been struggling all week and starting not to enjoy it, but to go out there and get a great race with David, it was neck and neck the whole race. Podium celebrations for the lightweight class and not forgetting the ultra lightweights either. Jumping to the top of the podium in the ultra lightweights, it's another win at Dundrod for Michael DeCooper with Christian Elkin second and Melissa Kennedy pipping Nigel Moore for third. I cannot even, you know, express how great I feel, you know, about it, you know, I, I really, I'm over the moon, Stephen, I'm really pleased with this, you know, thanks. I can't believe it, I'm, t I'm tough to bits, like, I'm a bit emotional, because, not that I've always been aiming to get a podium here, but I think it's just something special whenever you do finish in the top three here, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tough to bits. The top step of the podium awaits Michael de Coupil. Still to come, there's action from the Supersport race. Can anyone stop Peter Hickman from making it two wins in a row? The bikes are forming up on the Ulster Grand Prix grid at Dundrod for the Supersport race. Peter Hickman has put the triumph on pole position. He's up against some sturdy opposition. Lee Johnston is a proven 600cc competitor and holds the lap record for this class. Like Hickman, Dean Harrison is more renowned for his superbike exploits, but can do the business on smaller machinery. The same can also be said of Connor Cummins. we saw the superbike lap record go can we see it in the 600s i think this could be the best race of the day definitely this will oh lee johnson almost got mobbed then just gathered himself up and rejoined the race peter hickman poor start for him he was on the back wheel it was hopping and skipping and jumping but the flying kilo sorts them out dean harrison's having a look over going where are you coming from <laughs> Well, how did that happen? I was in the lead just now. He's back out in front. Or, no, he's behind. He's in third place. a long way, isn't he? He's in third That's place. That's a big gap. Yep. Yeah. Uh, coming down to Leathamstown. He's in third place. He's got Peter Hickman behind him in fourth. Lee Johnston out just ahead of him. And Davey Todd. Another cracking start from Davey Todd on the front row of the grid. Second wave away. Mike Norbury in pole position. A gap beside him. And it's uh, Mark Parrott and Davey Morgan. But those are the eyes of Dean Harrison, and they're focused up the road because that's where he wants to be, that's where he needs to be. So far, so furious. It's Johnston from Todd, from Harrison, from Hickman. Jamie Coward in fifth place, a little gap between the top four and fifth. Didn't that slipstream sort them out? Lee Johnson really didn't get a good start, but he's right out there now, isn't he? Straight out in front. You can, I think the flying kilo can be a little bit sympathetic sometimes. You may not be the fastest off the line, but you can 
get it back. You can gain it back what you've lost at the Flying Kilo, can't you? Yeah, even on that opening, that even when they're not really up to uh, full speed. They're up to full speed now out of Ireland's Lee Johnston. He's had such a great campaign in British Supersport this year on the 600. David oh. Todd, great second place at the moment. Well, yeah, he's, uh, he's on the Malenko Paget uh, Honda this time. Dean Harrison looking to take second place away, but as he's doing that, he's going to lose third to Peter Hickman. It's Harrison and Hickman all over again. Oh, uh, my goodness. 675 Triumph Triple Spits Flame. And Davey Todd applying the pressure to Lee Johnston, but don't look over your shoulder, Davey. Oh, in the grass, who was that? My goodness, that was a little bit too close for comfort. But here comes Peter Hickman, a little too close for comfort for Davy Todd, I would say, as they go through Jordan's cross. They are yes. on the pipe up here. Davy Todd holding him off. Impressive. Well, Davy Todd's a scrapper, isn't he? But uh, it looked like Hickman just had the speed to go straight by him, but there he is, stuck behind. Davy Todd had that big crash here last year at Diaz Leap, didn't he? And it, not showing any signs of. That, that doesn't bother of, him at all, no, does exactly, it? Exactly. Uh, they're bunching up slightly. Maybe Jamie Coward might be able to uh, break that little gap down to Dean Harrison, who finds himself in fourth place. And here's a look back at Lee Johnston starting and a little bit boggy off the line. And the rest of the front row goes breezing past him. It doesn't help, does it, when the likes of Dean Harrison and Connor Cummins get a better start than you do. But then again, the margins are so tiny. And the slipstream works well, so although this looked bad at the time, he soon made up the ground on the flying kilo. This is going to go from first to fourth to third to second to fifth to sixth to seventh. Yeah. It's going to be that close, and here, comes, here. here comes Peter Hickman. Straight through, this time he makes it work. But he's up against. I would have said, even though Peter Hickman started in pole position, for me, Lee Johnston on a 600. This is Lee Johnston's class, isn't it? This, and Peter Hickman's yeah. the superbike man against the super sport man, and Lee Johnston looking to break away. If he can just break Peter Hickman now... I'll tell you what, I don't think he really needs to. He just needs to be in front when you get to the chequered flag. I think these boys are going to stick together, and we're going to get an absolute freight train of a race from the top four. The gap's behind Dean Harrison now, isn't it? That's where it's appearing. Well, yes and no. I mean, half a second between Lee Johnson and uh, Peter Hickman, and a second covering the top four of the line, and less than a second back to fifth place. Here they come. Johnston, Hickman, Todd, Harrison, Coward still further back. David Johnson disappointing. He's way down the order at the moment. He's down in about 12th place on the leaderboard. But Peter Hickman has been picking them off and there is David Johnson number 10 we saw some great moves here last year some really bold moves going up in towards wheelers when you wouldn't expect them but not on this occasion through they go so the top of the circuit dropping around. down <laughs> yeah don't look around <laughs> yeah. i just i wonder if they are getting boards around the circuit or do they just wait till they complete the lap seven miles is the uh, distance of course of the dundrod track he can smell Hickey's after shaving. Knows he's there. He's there, yes. But anyway, Lindsay Hepin again. This is a great one for sorting oh, them out. Oh, oh. Hickman, he? Hickman. Oh, he did think about that one, didn't he? He did. Dean Harrison just tucked in, and we've not missed anything at the front. Hickman is still behind Lee Johnston. See what I was saying? Hickman never did anything wild at the hairpin in any of the other races. He was as calm as you like there because there's not a lot to be gained. He's thinking about doing it there because he can't think of anywhere else. And also, what's going on with Dean Harrison? And he keeps nudging his helmet. I wonder what's going on there. Anyway, again, another great battle further back. You don't have to be running at the front to have a great race. Oh, it is a great race as Todd and Harrison are trying, aren't they? Yes, yeah, Dean Harrison right now on Davy Todd's back wheel. Is Davy Todd fading? No, I don't think so. The gap here is growing, isn't it? Peter Hickman oh, is further ahead. Fastest lap for Hickman. 328.38, 127.8 miles Here an hour. Here comes Dino. Just getting a glimpse, Dean Harrison making the move on Davy Todd, and we cut away to the, the battle at the front again. Yeah, Hickman's got him. Hickman now leads. So Hickman ahead of Lee Johnston. Lee Johnston, who holds the record, the lap record for the 600s. Still, David Johnston just can't get close enough to Dominic Herbertson. 
So up into Ireland's again they go. Hickman from Johnston. Harrison back in third, of course, with Davy Todd in fourth, but that's still that's still very much up for grabs. Harrison desperate to bridge that gap to, to this yeah. battle here. But I think Lee Johnston might be falling back into his clutches I unless, right. unless Hick uh, Hickey's just going away again. That uh, Triumph is a beast of a machine, and uh, Peter Hickman's a beast of a rider when he's on it. But Lee Johnston, look at him, just riding the slipstream, closing right up again. Yeah, I have Lee Johnston, he's a quality rider. And as you've seen, he's another rider who's doing British Championship. So too, Dean Harrison, very wide, out of the uh, windmill. But here comes Lee Johnston on Peter Hickman as he's trying to get on the yes. slipstream. <laughs> My oh. goodness me, we have a new race leader again, or the old race leader is now the new race leader again, and Davy Todd has also passed Dean Harrison. It's all happening on the run up the hill. That's the slipstream for you, but Dean Harrison now looking at the back end of Davy Todd again, and he won't be pleased about that. But Lee Johnston will be very happy about this, but that silhouette's just a single bike there, wasn't it? And this is why every year race fans flock to Northern Ireland for the Ulster Grand Prix to witness racing as close at the, as this at speeds as a little slide for uh, Peter Hickman. Oh, 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 and Lee just standing it on its nose there and waving the back wheel in uh, Hickey's face. Hickey will get a, a smell of the uh, past now because he thinks Lee was a bit uh, on edge going into the hairpin. He might try and snap him up on the exit. So much happening in this race. We're ignoring all the fine racing going on further back down the field. Everybody's having a, a great opportunity to make the most of this racetrack. David Johnson, number 10 on the Honda. He was 12th at the end of the last lap. He's bridged that gap now, but I'm surprised to see David Johnson down there, but he hasn't been racing as much as these guys have of late. And here is Hickman on uh, Lee Johnson now again. It's the, it's the exit. It's getting onto the slipstream here, isn't it? Yeah. I thought he'd do it coming out of the uh, hairpin, but he didn't do, but he's right on Lee Johnston's toe. He knows how hard Lee Johnston is riding now to stay in front of him. Yep, I think we're going to see another mugging. Dean Harrison through on Davy Todd, or is he? Yeah, I think so. It is. Hickman still behind Lee Johnston and pushing him, pushing him. And very often, you know, when the rider bit, and here's the uh, the wave two battle. We've been talking about uh, quality riding all through the field. Yeah, Mott Parrott leads that one, bike 16. And this poor Dean Harrison just watching. Oh, Lee Johnston. He's right. asking that, isn't he? That's commitment. Oh, dear. Well, Davy oh. Todd is out. Oh, my goodness. That's a mechanical issue quite clearly, and we've lost that battle. They, Dean Harrison won't be too disappointed. We're on board with Peter Hickman. This is Jordan's cross, really bumpy. He's gonna do it on the run down to the flag as he's got to do it after the Lindsay hairpin. Oh, coward ahead of Cummins now. That's a nice little battle. That's a shame we haven't seen more of it, but of course, this is the- Oh, oh my goodness! Becky. No! Becky. No! No! That well, was- Two bikes on the right-hand side of the road. There was a gap. Lee? Just enough, big enough. Oh. As Johnston now says no. You want to ride it like that? I can oh, ride it like that. And it's an outbreaking competition into the hairpin. Hickey's got the lead at the moment. We saw something very similar with Erwin uh, and Hickman a week ago at Thruxton, but this is even better. It's going to go all the way. Can he stop it in time? Oh, Hickman's got the line. Now he's all about Johnston. Johnston. Can he get in on the exit? Sorry, Rich, yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> he was thinking he's got to get the driver out of the corner to come alongside him. It, I thought Hickey would wait. To there we go. Oh, there Lee. we go. My. And he's through again. Oh, Hickey. <laughs> Hickey's back in front. Oh, Lee Johnston and Peter Hickman. This is this is, a, this is the greatest lap I think I've ever seen at Dundrod. My goodness, they'll be talking about this one for years. But I think Hickman might have it now. I was going to suggest that Johnson's not close enough, and he isn't close enough. It's going to be Peter Hickman is going to win an absolute classic here at Dundrod at the Ulster Grand Prix. Fantastic race. What a privilege to be here watching that race on this circuit. Those two, Dean Harrison in third. Oh, we need to lie down after that one. That was an unbelievable last lap. Wow, that was just astonishing, but his the confirmation let's see what the gap was going over the line 0.3 of a second and that was the biggest gap at any time during that race between hickman and lee johnston well what an astonishing race proper race that i mean uh, i'll enjoy watching that back on tv to be fair i mean the last lap you know lee's so small anyway and his bike's really good so i just sat in his slipstream no problem but i couldn't 
really properly past him, but uh, coming out of the hairpin, we go through the next left, I'm not sure what it's called, but he ran all the way around the outside of me, ready for the right left through Flo Bog. And I just hung out on the outside, on through the right, ready for the next left, so I had, had the line then, and uh, yeah, mega race, really, really enjoyed it. Credit to Pete, you know, we rid out of the hairpin bar to bar, probably three, four corners, and uh, he's a sea of fast rider, you know what I mean, and it gives you the confidence then to do that, but I just clicked the limiter on when we were going over the crossroads, and that just gave him enough to, to get a wheel on me and, and come round the outside, so yeah, sort of my mistake, but credit to Pete, he rode really well, and, and his team and stuff, so yeah, we have to be happy with second today. That concludes day one at the Ulster Grand Prix. Join us next time for action from day two.